So, good day everyone. How are you guys? Doing good, ma'am. Good day, po. Okay, it's good. good. Day, okay, it's good to know that you are doing fine. Now, our topic for today is defining and non-defined relative clause. Before we start our lesson about it, can someone please read the following sentences? Anyone? Um, Who is it? Please state De your surname. De La Cruz po. Okay, Mr. De La Cruz. The woman is a doctor. My sister is a teacher. Thank you. Now, can I have another volunteer to read the following sentences? Anyone? Okay, Ms. Regimundo. The woman who lives next door is a doctor. My sister who lives in Canada is a teacher. Okay, as you can notice, I added some phrases there. Um, can someone please identify the phrases I added? Anyone? De La Cruz po. Okay, Mr. De La Cruz. In the first sentence, uh, I added who lives, ne who lives next door. And in the second sentence, who lives in Canada. Very good. Now, um, those phrases or clauses are called relative clause. What can you remember about relative clauses? Anyone? Espineda. Okay, Ms. Espineda. A relative clause is used to give extra information about the subject. It starts with a relative pronoun. Okay, very good. So, um, relative clauses, clauses are used to uh, add extra information about the subject without um, starting a new sentence. So, um, Ms. Espineda said that it starts with a relative pronoun. So, can someone please identify the relative pronouns? used in the following sentences. Anyone? Raimundo po. Okay, Ms. Raimundo. The, re the relative clause used is the word who. Okay, very good. Now that we know um, the relative clause, let's move on to the defining, defining relative clause and undefining relative clause. Can someone please read the first bullet under defining relative clause? Anyone? Raimundo po. Okay, Ms. Raimundo. Adds an essential information. So, when we hear the word essential, what what does it mean? Important. Very good. It means it, it is important. So, our example, the woman who lives next door is a doctor. So, if I ask you, who is the doctor? What is going to be your answer? The woman po. The woman? Who lives next door. Okay, very good. Um, the relative clause who lives next door is essential to know who is the woman specifically being talked about in the sentence. So what if we re remove the relative clause there? It will become the woman is a doctor. If I ask you who is the doctor, basing on the second sentence, what will be your answer? Anyone? Class? Please repeat the question, Paul. Okay, again. Um, if I ask you, who is the doctor, basing on the second sentence, what will be your answer? What is going to be your answer? Only the woman. Okay, the woman. You'll never know who who the woman is being talked about, right? That wa that's why it is essential. It cannot be removed from the sentence. So for the next bullet, under defining relative clause, can someone please read it? The first one. Okay, Mr. De La Cruz. Comes after the noun. Okay, thank you. So, um, defining relative clause um, comes after the noun. So, what is our relative clause in the sentence? It is who lives next door. 
ten or noun uh, that is used as a subject of the sentence is the word the woman. So as you can see, who lives next door comes after the noun the woman. Is it clear? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes, Okay, so let's move on to the third and last bullet under defining relative clause. Can someone please read it? Espineda po. Okay, Ms. Espineda. Pronouns who, whom, and which are often replaced by that in spoken English. Okay, thank you, Ms. Espineda. So, defining relative, in defining relative clause, the relative pronouns used can be replaced with the word that in spoken English. So, our relative clause again is who lives next door and the relative pronoun is who. If we replace that with that, it's going to be the woman that lives next door is a doctor. It is acceptable in spoken English. Both sentences are acceptable, okay? Yes, ma'am. Are, are there any questions? No, ma'am. Okay, so... Since there are no questions, can someone please enumerate the three bullets that we talked about, about defining relative clause? Anyone? Ma'am? Okay, Mr. De La Cruz. The first one is that it adds important information about the subject. Okay. The Next. second is uh, defining relative clauses comes after a noun. Okay. The last one is the relative pronouns used are replaceable with the word that in spoken English. Okay, very good, Mr. De La Cruz. So now that you know defining relative clause, let's move on to non defining relative clause. Can someone please read the first and second bullet under non defining relative clause? Okay, Mundo Po. Okay, Ms. Raimundo. Extra information. Sentence will not change even if it is removed. Okay, thank you. So, um, in our next uh, example, my sister who lives in Canada is a teacher. A relative clause there is who lives in Canada. It adds um, an information about the sister who is a teacher. So, even if it is removed in the sentence, my sister is a teacher, you will still know that the one being talked about, the one who is the teacher, is my sister. Is that clear? Yes, yes po. po. Okay, so let's move on. Can someone please read the third um, bullet under non-defining relative clause? Spineda po. Okay, Mrs. Spineda. Separated by a comma. Thank you. So, um, in non-defining relative clause, uh, it is always separated by a comma. So, as you can see, there is a comma before and after the relative clause who lives in Canada. Um, because it is only a, an extra information, you need to add comma. When, uh, when you add information, you use comma, right? When you um, enumerate, you use comma. So, that's the purpose. So, what if we remove the comma? It will, be, it will become, my sister who lives in Canada is a teacher. Do you think that the two sentences, that the two sentences are still the same? Yes or no? No, ma'am. No. No, very good. No, because in the first sentence, the context there is that I only have one sister. She is the teacher, and I only add who lives in Canada as an extra information about my sister who is a teacher. But then in the second sentence, the context there is that I have a lot of sister, sisters and that the teacher is the one who lives in Canada, not the one who lives um, in Singapore or the one who lives in Philippines, but my sister who lives in Canada specifically. Is that clear? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Now, let's move on to the third and last bullet under an undefining relative clause. Can someone please read it? Ma'am. Okay, Mr. De La Cruz. Cannot replace other pronouns with that. So, thank you. So, um, 
If you remember earlier, we said that in defining relative clause, relative pronouns can be um, replaced with the word that in spoken English. But in non-defining relative clause, it is not acceptable. So here, our relative pronoun is to. If it is replaced with the word that, my sister that lives in Canada is my sister that lives in Canada is a teacher. That sentence is not acceptable even in spoken English. Is, that, is everything clear? Yes, yes Bob. Okay, are there any questions about non defining relative clause? None, None, None po. Po. Okay. Since you don't have any questions, can someone please um, enumerate again the four bullets we talked about or the characteristics of a non defining relative clause? Anyone? Raymunda po. Okay, Miss Raymunda. Um, non-defining relative clauses are used to add extra information about the subject. Uh, so it means that even if it is removed in the sentence, it will still be the same. Uh, and it is separated by a comma. And, I la and unlike in defining relative clauses, the pronouns are irreplaceable by the word that. Okay, thank you, Ms. Raimundo. Now that I can see that you know the difference between defining and non-defining relative clauses, I want you to have a practice. So, in this practice, I want you to read. I want a volunteer and then read the sentences and identify which sentence is correct. Are there any volunteers? Ms. Pineda po. Okay, Mrs. Pineda. I remember the day when I met you. I remember the day when I met you. The first sentence is the correct one because if you remove the relative clause, when I met you, you will not know what day is the one being remembered by the subject I. Okay, very good. Now that I can see that um, you know it, you know the difference, between the two, I want to have an oral activity for uh, for you to further master it. So in this activity, I want you to read and identify the relative clauses in each sentence. After um, identifying the relative clause, determine each if it is defining or non-defining relative clause. After that, you will need to explain and defend your answer. Is everything um, clear? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Okay, so for the first item, can we have Miss Raimundo? Yes. Um, the dish which I ordered was delicious. Which I ordered, it is a defining relative clause because if it is removed, you will not know that the dish she ordered is the one that is delicious. Okay, very good. So... Item number two, can uh, can Mr. De La Cruz answer it? The person who, help, who helped her was really kind. Uh, the relative clause in the sentence for is who helped her, and it is a defining relative clause because it is unimportant information to know who the person the speaker considered as kind. Okay, very good, Mr. De La Cruz. Now for the third item, Mrs. Pineda. My friend Anna, who I love, is going to become a bride. Who I love. It is a non-defining relative clause because even if you remove it, you will still know that the one who's going to be a bride is my friend Anna. Okay, very good, Mrs. Pineda. Now for the fourth item, Mr. De La Cruz. People who speak in public are usually nervous beforehand. Okay. Uh, who speak in public is a defining relative clause, ma'am, because it is an essential information and to, to know who are the people that are nervous beforehand. Okay, very good, Mr. De La Cruz. Now for the fifth and last item, Ms. Raimundo. My car, which is old, broke down after a few miles. The relative clause in the sentence is, which is old. It is a non-defining relative pronoun because even if it is removed in the sentence, 
you will still know that the one broke down after a few miles is the car. Okay, very good. Very good class. Now, that's the end of our discussion. That's all for today. I hope you learned a lot. Thank you and God bless. Goodbye. Thank you, Mom. Thank you, Mom. Bye.